So let's begin by talking about a general overview of the Motion 5 interface. If you've used Motion in the past, you're going to find there's a lot of changes. Not so much to the way it works. Uh, there's a few changes to the way it works, but there's a lot of changes to the way it looks and, and some of the other interface elements. For one thing, you'll see that Motion is all one window now. There's just this one window. You no longer have the separate windows, but you do have these different panes within the window. And so on the left here, you see this little area here. This is what we used to call the utility window. Now we call this the utility pane. This contains these three areas, the file browser, the library, and the inspector. And these are going to be, uh, I'll cover more what you do in these things in a little while, but that's sort of your uh, organizational area. Then over here, this is your main canvas area, and this is where you see your work, and this is where you do the manipulation of your objects. So you see I can click on and move objects around. And one of the really important and interesting things that you're going to need to get used to doing when you're working in Motion 5 is the idea that you can make changes while the video is playing. So you can leave your video playing. You see the little playhead down here. This is called the mini timeline. And this is showing us what's going on. You see the object I have selected, that paint stroke, which is the, the W and the welcome to. This object lasts from there to there in time. And if I selected a different object, like the Elkham 2, you see that appears there, or the Motion 5, and so forth. So you see the different objects appear down here in the mini timeline, as well as up here in the main canvas area. We can manipulate the objects here, or we can manipulate them in time down here. There's also an important window called the HUD, or the Heads Up Display. And this is where you see a shortcut list of the most common settings that you're likely to want to adjust for the different objects. So you see, if I select the, the paint stroke, I get one set of parameters. And if I select a text object, like the Motion 5, I get a different set of parameters. So you can really make changes to whatever is selected. This is context sensitive based on what is currently selected. And you can choose between the different elements here. I've got a few different uh, what are called behaviors. I'll come back to what those are. But these different op attributes that if I choose one of those, I can manipulate the settings now for this is the hop out. That's what makes those little letters. If you watch here when the, the welcome to comes around again here. You see how these little letters, that they hop out, they vanish like that. That's based on this little hop out effect, and that's being controlled there, and so forth. So the HUD allows you to make manipulations to individual parameters of your different objects. Two other main areas that are not shown by default, first of all, is the project pane. I'm going to show the project pane, and here you can see all the individual objects within my project. You see the hierarchy of organization. Here's a group containing the multiple items, and then here are the three elements here. If I uh, make my window a little bit larger, you'll be able to see that a little easier. So there you see there's the group containing the Motion 5 words, the Elkham 2 words, and the Paint Stroke, which is my W. And each of these is listed here in this Layers tab of the Project area. See, there's also an Audio tab. If I go there, you can see those little, if I turn on my audio, you hear the little sizzle, the voltage electrical, and then the whoosh. And you see that these are, there's a little fade out. See the little fade out action happening? I did that with keyframes. And I'll teach you how to do that later. See how the, the audio is manipulated there as well. So all this can be controlled here in this project pane. If I close that up, let's just close my project pane. And now let's open the timeline. The timeline down here at the bottom, this allows you to see your objects. The, the front area, it looks similar to that project pane where you can see the objects and their hierarchy. But over here, we can see how those objects appear in time. And again, we can see that the paint stroke lasts from here to here. The Elkham 2 appears here, and the Motion 5 appears there, all of them contained within the group. And I can manipulate these in time. So I can say, let's have the Elkham 2 appear at the same time as the W. And now watch as it comes around. The W appears and the Elkham 2 at the same time. As a opposed to if I move that over, now the W is going to appear. Here comes the W, and then a moment later, then the Elkham 2, right? So you see how I've sp spread those out by manipulating those in time. And we're going to do all sorts of other cool things in the timeline, including doing keyframe and other sort of audio effects. It's a very, very powerful and robust interface. But you don't need to see these things. You can hide and show the project pane and the timing area because you don't necessarily want to look at them while you're manipulating the objects right here in the main canvas area. So that's a quick overview of the main motion interface. Now let's talk about how to create simple objects.